Another stage, another cold front. More rain fell overnight and persisted well into the day with a prediction of 11 millimeters to fall throughout the day. But that was for Somerset West. In the nook of the mountains, clouds banked up and the rain fell in far greater quantities. It would be another challenging day for riders and equipment. It would not be a day for defensive riding. Focusing on avoiding issues would only attract high drama. It was not as if the 2023 Apsa Cape Epic was starved of drama to begin with. Though the prologue itself was hot and dusty, it had rained the day before the race started, but the opening time trial was conducted under clear skies and a rising heat. By the time the UCI men and women rolled off the start ramps, the mercury had risen into the mid-twenties. Though it was never scorchingly hot, it was certainly warm enough to make it uncomfortable. Not as uncomfortable as the wind made life on stage one though, it blew a gale. Quite literally, helicopters were grounded for safety reasons and the teams had to rely upon each other to take turns riding into the tempest. On downward reaches, the riders were blown along. But as is the way of wind and bicycles, it always seems to be raging from the front or from the side. After two days of benign weather, the rain began to fall after the last riders had crossed the line on stage four. This meant the sun rose behind dark clouds on Oak Valley for the Queen stage. Out on the route, conditions bordered on enforcing a triathlon with a swim leg through the first 40 kilometers. Deep puddles, river crossings and roads becoming torrents made for an exceptionally challenging day out. As if the 102 km stage with 2,450 meters of climbing was not hard enough already. As if the previous day was not tough enough, the heavens reopened ahead of the penultimate stage. It rained through the early hours of the morning and throughout the racing, turning trails into slip and slides rather than the incredible single tracks the teams had been expecting at Lawrenceford. The conditions would play a leading role in the day's excitement. In the UCI men's race, a new team would start stage six in the yellow leader's jersey. On the Queen stage, Aubert Liet Speed Company raced away from their rivals on Grunlandberg and miraculously maintained their lead across the next 60 kilometers. Despite being chased by Scott Stram, Toyota Specialized in Singer Racing, Lukas Baum and Georg Geiger stayed out ahead. The Germans crossed the finish first and then waited while their pre-stage deficit ticked away. When Nino Schurter and Andri Frischneck finished third two minutes and 40 seconds later, Baum and Egger knew they would be starting the penultimate stage in yellow. In the CM.com UCI women's race, early difficulties did little to dissuade Vera Losser and Kim LeCourt of efficient Infinity Insure. The Namibian champion crashed twice in the early kilometers and had to stop to fix her shoe with duct tape again. Then she and LeCourt rode past their rivals and climbed into an unassailable lead on the stage. Candace Lill and Amy Wakefield endured a difficult day but only conceded 2 minutes and 36 seconds of their overall advantage. Canada Alvassara based Greta Steinberg and Monica Calderon completed the stage podium. 91 Songo Specialized remained third on the general classification. Going into stage six, Aubert Liet Speed Company led the men's overall standings by 1 minute and 29 seconds. E4.net Seattle Coffee Co. held a 13 minute and 53 second advantage over efficient Infinity Insure. Due to the rain and wind, the planned 78 km route with 2,300 meters of climbing was shortened to 73 km. The highest point of the stage, at the summit of Drix Drag, was removed for safety reasons as the conditions made it impossible to get a medical team high enough up in the mountains. For the second day in a row, trails were turned into rivers. But unlike on the slopes of Hrundlandberg the day before, the foothills of the Heldeberg Mountains were packed with clay making the single tracks treacherously slippery. Avoiding mechanicals would be the key to success on the stage. Before the start, the mood was pensive among the UCI men, but there would be opportunities in the wild weather for those willing to take them. Alex Miller and his Paiga Eurostil teammate Philip Bass were not the only riders hoping for good legs. Today is another day you just got to embrace the chaos um, and uh, 
try to enjoy it. You know, it's like when fun can invert, invert when it's so bad, and then you can suddenly kind of like realize that this is ridiculous and fun. So hopefully we get those moments, but we're just gonna, you know, give it all we have. And it's a short stage. Um, we can kind of play off the leaders, but definitely go for the stage win. And um, if we can take time on GC, we'll, we'll should try. Yeah, another day, like you said, in the New Jersey, always, always a privilege. I mean. Uh, uh, we six days into it uh, today and tomorrow left another two big days. Well, today has been shortened out here, um, so 73 kilometers. A um, little bit, little bit shorter, shorter, shorter day, so to say. But I think the pace will still be fast and furious from the beginning. Um, yeah, we'll see. See how I feel. Hopefully, you have the legs are there. The general mood in the field was one of hope rather than knowledge that their legs would be good. Only the general classification contenders were either assured, or at least faking assurance, in their remaining vitality. In the CM.com UCI women's race, the riders are approaching the stage as a fresh challenge, putting the previous day's successes or failures behind them. for stage six uh, of the Amsterdam Cape Epic. Uh, looks like a really tough one again. Uh, the weather's come to play, uh, which will make it more dramatic even. So yeah, I'm sure today's going to be a very exciting race. Um, we hope that Ames is feeling a lot better. Um, but if not, we're just going to push all the way as we did yesterday. Today is, I think, about 70 Ks. Um, looks like some nice rain again for us, which is good. Windy, wild, so that's always good for us to make it fun. Setting out into well-known trails, but in conditions which made the known unknown. With the route shortened, best laid plans would need to be adapted on the fly. Though the most experienced riders in the group should have been able to do just that. As they will have raced in conditions this bad many times before. Staying calm regardless of what happened would be essential. But nobody could have predicted the chaos that would unfold. In the opening kilometers on the fire road climbs to below the cloud-covered peaks of the Helderberg Mountains, the pace was as fast as it could be. A large group of teams vied for positions and riders attempted to find the driest lines. Most of the peloton were forced to ride where their rivals dictated, their wheels being sucked back by an increasingly churned up muddy surface. Grip was at a premium. As had been the cast the day before, the top three general classification teams again proved themselves the strongest. Obea Liet Speed Company, Scott Sram and Toyota Specialized 91 climbed away from the rest of the peloton on the first ascent. Once again, it looked like the trio would decide the stage honours. Though early in the day, such was their dominance in the race thus far, that it did not seem unlikely to play out relatively smoothly. At least that was until Andre Frischneck started to struggle. The Swiss rider has frequently looked the weakest of the six strongest riders in the race. Once again, he relied on Nino Schurter to drop back and start the damage limitation efforts. On the muddy roads and trails, chasing would not be easy, however, as any risk carried a heavier potential penalty, and the surfaces made carrying speed exceptionally difficult. In the single tracks, Lukas Baum, Gael Geiger, Chris Plevins and Matt Beers still managed to put on an exhibition of riding skill. Though taking to the air might have allowed them to speed up, it carried the potential of sliding out upon landing. Toyota Specialized 91 drove the pace in the trails, attempting to turn the tables on Albert Liet Speed Company playing Bauer Menegger's own game. Whether it was under pressure from Beers and Blevins or just bad luck, but Baum suffered a mechanical. A piece of wire had become lodged in his chain and rear derailleur. Baum stopped to survey the damage, and with the aid of Egger, decided that any course of action would be to backtrack to the tech zone one and a half kilometers away. With his chain removed and with Egger's assistance, he made it back to the water point at the 41 kilometer mark. En route back, Scott Sram passed to Abia Liet Speed Company, learning that their bad day was not as terrible as their primary rivals. 
Dealing with the practicalities of their issue, Baumann Egg installed a new derailleur and chain in double quick time. The relatively complex task, which required fine motor skills to set the gears again too, took the pair under 10 minutes. Though it cost them six positions on the trails, their Absecate epic campaign was still alive. The first part of the opening climb in the CM.com UCI women's race was ridden at a steady tempo. Fast enough to enforce a gradual splitting as the teams contesting 10th place on the general classification dropped off from the lead group. By the first time check after 6 kilometers, only efficient infinity ensure E4.net Seattle Coffee Co. 91 Songo Specialized, Canada Vas Arabe, Best of Performance, Valley Electrical and 8 Capital remained in contention. Thereafter, Vera Lossa and Kim Lacord upped their pace, accelerating on the muddy climb, distancing the lesser teams. Of the top four squads, the first to drop off were Greta Steinberg and Monica Calderon, and then Sofia gomez Viafan and Katharina Nash. Only the race leaders, Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill, could follow the efficient Infinity Insure team into the trails. The women in the red Apps African jerseys and the pair in the orange CM.com leaders jerseys had clearly been the strongest teams in the race. Behind them, every moment spent out on the trail on stage six was a moment of discomfort that had to be endured. For riders like Kylie Honokom, who'd already spent nearly five hours longer out on the route than the race leaders over the course of the week, those extra minutes were taking their inexorable toll. 91 Songo Specialized had started the Absa Cape Epic strongly, but Sofia Gomez Viafan and Katharina Nash had faded through the second half of the week. In the rain, they were riding strong, remaining close to the top teams without challenging for first position. Having covered the first 30 kilometers without incident, racing in tandem with the efficient Infinity Insure team, disaster struck for E4.net Seattle Coffee Co. Loza clipped a rock, which rolled into Wakefield's path. Almost instantly, her rear tire went flat, forcing Wakefield and Lil to stop to fix the puncture. Initially, they used a CO2 bomb to try and inflate the tire, but it wouldn't hold air. They then inserted a spare tube, but this too did not work. With no other options, they had to resort to Wakefield riding to the next tech zone on the flat tire and carbon rim. Lil lent a hand to try and speed the race to a spare wheel. But even so, they were soon caught and passed by chasing teams. Earlier, 91 Songo Specialized and Canada Vas Arabe had passed them. Then Haley Breen and Tiffany Keep of Valley Electrical powered past the hobbled E4.net Seattle Coffee Co. team, with eight capitals Yanka Stefkova and Martina Krahulkova in tow. All told, Wakefield had to ride eight kilometers on her rim before struggling to change the by then critically damaged wheel at the tech zone. In the men's race, with Obea Liet Speed Company having lost 10 minutes to their major mechanical, Toyota Specialized 91 were charging on. Matt Beers and Chris Blevins probably did not know the severity of their rivals' issues initially, but with Scott Stram also off the pace, they were making up time on both their main rivals. The wet trails, which are giving everyone problems, caused the stage leaders slightly less issues. Chasing, Nino Schurden and Refreshnik were powerless to reel Toyota Specialized 91 in. Despite their best efforts, the Swiss pairing continued to ship seconds throughout the course. Each kilometer was another handful of seconds off their general classification advantage over Beers and Blevins. In third place on the trails, having inherited the spot after Aubert Liet Speed Company's mechanical caused a reshuffle, was the Canada Vas Arabe team of Roberto Beaumartin and Miguel Munoz Moreno. The Spanish team were having their best day of the race and were battling it out with the Bulls Mavericks. Alban Lacarta and Alex Rudel Cortinet had found their best legs in the wet. The big Austrian and his young French teammate were keeping Canyon Northwave 2, William Pirelli Factory, and Toyota Specialized 91 2 behind them. Every pedal stroke was a struggle, however, gauging the effort that could be imparted to maintain grip but deliver enough power to keep forward momentum. Having taken just four and a half minutes to change their derailleur, Lucas Baum and Georg Gega were in eighth place on the trails. Their time deficit after 60 of the 73 kilometers was 10 minutes and 52 seconds. Despite the metaphorical mountain they had to climb, Baum and Egger remained perfectly in sync. Even that was not enough to enable them to make up time in the final 13 kilometers on the hard-charging Beers and Blevins. 
After his relatively difficult day on stage five, the American was back in the pound seats on stage six. Blevins did the lion's share of the pacemaking for Toyota Specialized 91. In a perfect illustration of what a difference a day can make, he was brimming with confidence. Racing back to the low-inset fields and the stage finish, the team were driving through the wet terrain with remarkable efficiency. Blevins and Beers rounded the final corner and sprinted for the line to maximize their time gains. The win was their fifth of the race. Scott Strand, Schurter and Frischnick were second on the stage, but conceded four minutes and seven seconds to Toyota Specialized 91. In the closing kilometers, Lakata and Rudel Cortinat had won up in their battle with the Canada Vas Arabay team. In so doing, the Bulls Mavericks claimed third. Remarkably, the Toyota Specialized 91 team had won all but two stages of the race. And despite not having won a stage at all, Schurter and Frischnick were back in the yellow Chiavita jerseys. After their dramatic day, Obea Liet Speed Company conceded 11 minutes and 8 seconds to Toyota Specialized 91 and 7 minutes and 1 second to Scott Sram. Going into the grand finale, Schurter and Frischnick hold a 1 minute and 32 second advantage over Beers and Blevins. Baum and Egger have 5 minutes and 32 seconds to make up if they want to repeat that 2022 miracle. Yeah, first I, I didn't notice what's, um, what's really the problem and I, when I looked down at it really rarely I saw a little piece of a metal fence uh, stuck in the pulley wheel uh, and we tried to remove it, got it out, but then we realized that the whole uh, rear derailleur is broken. So we were forced to, to go back to the tech zone to get our spare rear derailleur. Yeah, so the special thing about the Cape Epic is that we um, have no uh, outside assist uh, here at the tech zone. So if there's any problem with your bike, you're forced to fix it yourself. At that point, uh, it, was, it was basically clear also to us that um, the yellow jersey is gone for today. Um, and it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be even harder for tomorrow to, to catch it back. Unfortunately, we're in a good position until then and um, could have been comfortably giving you an interview about uh, the last stage with the yellow jersey. But um, yeah, I guess that's racing and uh, we draw the, the short straw today. Yeah, I mean, we we really wanted to push the pace and try and just like, you know, at this point we just have to try and force someone into a mistake or mechanical, even if it maybe is ourselves. And I don't know what really happened to speed. I just saw jockey wheels flying, so obviously they hit like a wire or something, um, which really, it does suck. Um, but yeah, I mean, we just, we're just riding our race and it just happened. So then we knew we just had to go full gas and... Um, make as much time as we can on on them to try and like hop whoever on the podium so yeah yeah it was another quite wild uh, stage uh, brutal conditions and uh, yeah at the first first time yeah I always thought yeah this this race is over uh, there's definitely a team stronger than us but then we had the good luck on our side and uh, we are back in yellow but yeah, it's not the, the nicest way to take over yellow if, if you know another team had a bad mechanical. But yeah, sometimes you have some luck and uh, we are happy to be back in yellow. The drama in the CM.com UCI women's race left efficient Infinity Insure in a commanding position. Vera Losser and Kim Lacourt still had a lot of racing to do, however. And with the conditions getting worse, victory was anything but a foregone conclusion. The Mauritian had preached a safety first approach all race and with the virtual general classification lead within her grasp, she and her Namibian teammate had only to ride home safely at a good speed. Riding safely was one thing, riding at a good speed was another entirely. The muddy roads and trails sucking at the riders wheels slowing every rotation. 91 Songo Specialized were seemingly enjoying the adverse conditions though. Perhaps it was Katarina Nash's skiing routes or Sofia Gomez Viafan's Northern Hemisphere adopted home training base, but they were clearly better adapted to the rain than they had been to the wind or heat. Greta Steinberg and Monica Calderon were also making the most of the wet weather. The Absa Cape Epic debutantes were settling into the race, growing with confidence and stature with each passing stage. Perhaps the lessons they learned in the arduous 2023 edition will serve them well when they return for an assault on the orange jerseys in years to come. Efficient Infinity Insure, meanwhile, was soaking up every moment of the stage. 
Having started the race without a single victory between them, they had ridden their way to three hard-fought wins and were on the cusp of adding a fourth. Rolling onto the sodden fields of Lawrence Hedwine Estate, Lozer and Lacourte were visibly emotional. They did not want to believe at first that they had done enough not only to win the stage, commandingly, but also to seize the leaders' jerseys. They were followed home by 91 Songo Specialized as Gomez Viafan and Nash finished second. The Canada of Asarabe team completed the podium on the day. Having pushed hard through the final 30 kilometers, Wakefield and Lille finished fourth, but crucially 39 minutes down on the day's victors. Lozer and Lacourt's victory saw them join Gomez Viafan, Nash, Steinberg and Calderon on the stage podium. The performance and their rival's misfortune was enough to earn them the CM.com UCI women's jerseys. The penultimate stage was won in 4 hours 30 minutes and 2 seconds, with a near 13 minute buffer to second. That meant that going into the grand finale, the efficient Infinity Insure team held a 25 minute advantage over E4.net Seattle Coffee Co. Yeah, look, um, I think we we didn't really expect it. It's um, we had a big gap behind, but um, we kept on saying to each other that we're just going to keep it safe and anything can happen. And this is mountain biking, especially with this weather. And um, we actually took the stage from the gun. We we lead the race from the start, and we just kept our own race. And one by one, people started dropping. But yeah, I, um, yeah, it's surreal. I think we never stopped going full gas until we cross the line because we never got one time gap so um, yeah it's uh, clearly it's special as you can see we are absolute madness like truly <laughs> i mean what a stage um i mean even without all our drama it would have been a hectic stage um but yeah i mean for us today we started the day in orange we climbed with the vera and kim up till like 40k 35ks and then a massive rock hit amy's rim um flicked up from vera's wheel Obviously not on purpose, and yeah, smashed us completely. And so we had to deal with this. We tried everything we could to fix it, but we just couldn't. So we had to get to the next tech zone. And yeah, from there, just do what we could to the line. Yeah, the whole tire burst off the rim as well. Um, so we had like an inner tube. So we're like, no, maybe we can bomb it, and then um, that didn't work. So we took the the inner like the inner foam thing out, and then we put a tube in. And I thought that might hold, but it was the whole wheel was bent like that. And then we were like, okay. So give everything and then I just rode in the rim. Just rode in the tire and then the tire came off and then we had to take the wheel out to take the tire off and I rode to the rim on the rim probably for like five Ks. While the day brought chaos at the sharp end, for Loch Le Morton it was all about fun despite the rain on the trail to Val I don't know, epic to cool one, you know. Uh, they're hard stages, but um, like pretty short and intense, so uh, yeah, di different than doing super long stuff, but super fun. The Australian was taking part in his second laps at Cape Epic, racing alongside Keegan Svensson. The EF Easy Post SCB SRAM pair had been quietly efficient during the race. Having started conservatively, they grew as the race progressed. With Morton challenged by his mountain bike and gravel racer partner in a way his 2021 teammate Kenneth Karaya had been unable to do. Their general classification standing has improved on virtually every day. Though Vincenzo Nibali had started the race better, the Italian and his partner Samueli Poro were 13 seconds behind Morton and Swenson after the penultimate stage. The grand finale of the 2023 Absa Cape Epic is suitably difficult. A proper challenge to complete eight of the toughest days of racing in the event's 19 edition history. At 80 kilometers long with 2,400 meters of climbing, the stage features three major climbs. The saddle from Lawrenceford into the Stellenbosch Winelands is the first, followed by their center Botmas Kop. The final climb is the Game Camp climb in Old Bethlehem Farm. Those challenges could provide the opportunity for Toyota Specialized 91 or Obea Liet Speed Company to upset Scott Sram on the trail to Val de Vie. The scene is set for a fiercely contested Stage 7.